this again. His likeness and stones are fool in my book. The child has a small mirror in his hands. He holds it up at angles, inspecting his eyes, his chin, the crown of his head. He spots you, and his arms snap to his side. I'm not supposed to talk to strangers. Why? But are you a sorcerer? One of those guys that brings the bad void things here? The child looks at you straight on, unafraid, searching your face. He lifts his mirror to his nose, closes one eye, and looks at himself again. I don't see any source on you or me. I guess they're wrong or crazy. <laughs> Maybe you're right. At least they don't mind where anyone goes. They know we can't leave the island, and it's a lot nicer out here than outside. They're gone now. The Magisters took them already. I guess now they're cured. And maybe they're waiting for me back at home. But you didn't die. You 
There isn't anywhere safer. That's what I mean. You'll see. I guess I am, but it's just normal to be scared. Nowhere isn't scary. Void Woken. Those are the same beasts that sank our ship. Damn. They made it to shore. I thought these bloody collars were supposed to keep those things at bay.
face is familiar. What's left of it? He was aboard the ship. giant. My word, this blasted isle is teeming with them. What's that? Yes, I did see how it made short work of the great acorn servants. Quite right, very impressive. But that is no reason to trust it. Giants like that destroyed our forests. They are the very reason the great acorn is returning in all its wrath. What? Dear me, have you taken leave of all six of your senses? You would have me use this giant for a shield? Why would I... Oh, I see. You cunning devil, Quirkus. Of course, if it defeated the great acorn's vile servants, it can do so again. We need only follow in its big, wide shadow and be safe. Gad! It speaks our tongue, Quirkus! Hush before! What do you mean, a good time for introductions? You know full well who I am, you silly old cat. The great Salora, grandest of the... Oh, introduce myself to the giant. I shall do no such thing. You give away your trust too easily, my dear steed. No, we will have the giant march. In time, we'll see whether it deserves our confidence. Now, onwards! Shield! Venture forth, post haste! The great acorn waits for no one. You spot a strange lizard gazing over the water with a steady, malcontent stare. His skin is of a bright blood-red color. Could he be? Yes, 
You recognize him from the ship. It would seem you're not the only one who survived the tentacles of the deep. The lizard turns about with the graceful ease of a dancer, or a duelist. You lock eyes with his, two smoldering embers that sizzle your very soul. I did survive, yes. And chances are I wouldn't have, had you not returned to the aid of your fellow passengers down in that dreadful hole. You have my gratitude. Hand over heart, he salutes you with a bob of the head. More than a nod, though less than a bow. Yes, I'm sure you've all the makings of a hero and all that, but let's not get carried away, shall we? Nevertheless, one good turn does deserve another, so as far as the whole slave business is concerned, let's just forget about it. You may as well have your freedom. Now then, if there's nothing further... I'm sure I don't mean to sound condescending, but I had thought it quite self-evident I was gazing out over the waves. He sighs dramatically. Tell me, what do you see when you cast your glance over this ocean? Memories. Quite so. He looks out over the water once more, and so do you. A few tranquil moments pass as the waves lap against your thoughts. As for myself, when I consider this vast expanse before us, I see an empire. I see continents dotted with mighty cities. And shimmering along the soft curve of the sea's horizon, I picture the palaces that formed my paradise. Lost. What do you mean, what do I mean? I mean just what I say. I had a very actual empire that I lost. Suddenly, having all the air of being deeply offended, he stares at you with utter incredulity. Well, don't just stand there gawking like an ape at an abacus. Or do you really mean to tell me you don't know who I am? Oh, may the Seven have mercy on their own creation. I am the Red Prince, the All-Conqueror, the World Tamer, the Spouse of the Sun. Of course you know me. There's a brief moment's pause, during which his grandiloquent pose deflates ever so slightly. That said, I suppose I must own up to the fact that I find myself rather in between All-Conquering and World Taming opportunities at the moment. The grandeur that is my fate has uh, hit a bit of a snack. But never you worry. For the throne I was destined, and my throne I shall have. Truly. A kind offer indeed. And you've already proven to be trustworthy enough. You came back for the others on that ship, after all. Fine, I accept, on one condition. For reasons I'll not disclose right now, it is imperative that I should meet with a dreamer, one of the mystics of my kind. I've reason to believe one of them may be present on this island. Promise me we'll look for him, and I'll extend you the blessing of my company. You do tend to beat around the bush, don't you? Oh well, that wishy- So, now that that's settled, first things first. Even if you are as versed in the art of eloquence as I am, that our swords will be doing a lot of the talking from here on out goes without saying. As a born fighter, I prefer the perfection of the blade myself. But I'm well acquainted with the secrets of magic, and yes, even subterfuge. What say you? Very well. Onwards then to victory or death. The Red Prince nods and gives you a smile that wavers ever so delicately between courtesy and contempt. Now, as you're away, you'll be travelling with a prince. 
proper forms of address include Your Majesty, Your Royal Highness, or, or if you're feeling particularly frivolous, my lord. As your luck would have it, I seem to be fresh out of luggage, so you won't be required to carry my belongings. Of course, there are other forms of protocol to bear in mind, but I'll see to it you'll pick up the rest as we go. So, without further ado, let us be off!
Maybe my luck is about to change. It seems we are not the only ones taking on strays. No, no need to be jealous, Quirkus. Fur maketh not... The cat's eyes are clouded and grey, but it stares at you with acute intensity. Hmm. What? How did I get... Hey, stop following me. Huh? Yeah, fine. I'm fine. I just... I'm not sure. It's all the cat opens his mouth as if to speak. But his eyes lose focus, and with a jerk, he turns away from you. The cat's eyes are cloud... What's going on?
Here lies a nameless inmate. May he find the peace denied him in life in the Hall of Echoes. here than that stinking boat, huh? I'm sure glad you went back to save the others. Saw one of them ringing out their tunic at the shore a few hours ago. Say hi for me. Ooh, that's a pretty one. Dead of the crew, three, four pretty shells on the shore.
this leads. As the alcove opens up, you see the same skeleton that you met on the boat before it sank. He's still not wearing his mask. He's leaning over a corpse, prodding and pulling at the skin of its face. Bugger. How on earth am I supposed to... Oh. Perhaps... Skeletal fingers reach down and grip the skin of the dead man's face, pulling sharply upwards. After a few more tugs at the man's cheeks, the skeleton relents, letting the head drop to the ground with a damp thud. Damnation. That stuck fast. I wonder, does the beard act as some form of anchor? Ah! No! Stay back! Don't... Oh, it's you. I must admit I'm surprised. Perhaps you're more buoyant than I suspected. It seems the human that stole my mask was rather more resourceful than I gave her credit for. I chased her here, but she rather seems to have given me the slip. Thus... He turns back to the body, prodding at its face cautiously. Why, its face, of course. What other use would I have for some rotting corpse? A face that seems rather stubbornly attached to his skull. I would normally employ a tool to delicately but viciously rip the face from the body. I could then craft a mask to hide my bone. But as I lack such a tool... The skeleton grabs the corpse by the cheeks and pulls hard, grunting in frustration as the body's skin holds firm. Because my own was stolen from me. And the idea of being chased across Rivalon by every idiot with a torch does not appeal. Oh, get away! Monster! Hide the children! Oh. You are simple beasts. And you simply do not like my... Well, not my kind, but those that look like me. So... If I am to traverse this land, I will need a mask to disguise my features. Oh, don't be ridiculous. I have important things to do on Reaper's Coast. I cannot simply sit about waiting for the rest of you to die so I may continue my business in peace. No. I may be an eternal, but my patience has its limits. Indeed, I may be the only eternal. My people seem rather absent, at least from this realm. As for the others, well, there is an excavation site at the Black Pit's oil fields. Perhaps there I'll find my answers. A cult? Hardly. We were a race that existed before the idea of race was needed. We were all one. I could ask you to imagine an Eternal as a creature of incredible intelligence and skill. But I fear the limits of your imagination would not do us justice. We studied the mysteries of the universe. We created works of great art. We... We disappeared. But I will find them. Wherever they are, I will find them. We will have our world again. Ah, well, that is the curious thing. They are clearly absent from this world, and yet they are everywhere. Every one of your races resembles them in some manner, and the statues you have built to your gods look remarkably familiar. Perhaps my people have ascended to some new realm. Or perhaps your gods are merely a folk memory. Regardless, they are not here. But I will find them. Wherever they are, I will find them. Well, that hardly seems relevant. But if you must know, I was inconvenienced for a time. Several centuries, in fact. 
Or perhaps millennia. One tends to lose track. I was sealed in a tomb for daring to be curious about the world. It seems our king did not agree that the universe should be explored to its full potential. Perhaps I should thank him. It seems I was spared whatever happened to the others. I wonder if flowers would be appropriate. I suppose, circumstances being what they are, it could be advantageous. You seem more at ease in this world than I. A guide would certainly be useful. Excellent. While we are conversing, perhaps you notice that I am rather skilled in, well, all things. Of course, the arcane arts are my little speciality, but being a brilliant wizard does not mean I cannot handle blade or bow. So, which do you require for this enterprise of yours? I could do that with one hand behind my spine. Splendid. Very well. What's this? I found something.
already know the truth, Magister. Now speak. <laughs> <laughs> 